Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord on this Pentecost Sunday this morning? Amen. Tell you a little scripture that you ought to know. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. You know that's the same today, the same God that he was back then as he is right now. Peter said it's a promise unto you and to your children and all those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. We're in the house of the Lord today to receive that promise. If somebody's here today that don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost, I'm here to tell you he's able to give it to you. Amen. Let's all of us just magnify him for a moment. Lift up your voices and praise the King of Kings. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. 
crazy. The people out there may think we're a little weird, but let me tell you what's going on in this place today. It's a little recognition of what our God did for us. He gave us a way out. He gave us the Holy Ghost. He gave us a way to make it back home. And I pray that each and every person would take advantage of it today in here. And let's just show him that we're glad. Let's just show him that we're proud of what he gave us. Let's just show him that we're happy about this life that he's allowing us to live in this place today. Oh, you should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost. You got the top of my head to the soul of my feet. I felt the Spirit moving all over me. You should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost. You got the top of my we serve the God of multiplication. We serve a God that can take anything we have and he can multiply it for himself. He can multiply it for his kingdom. He can multiply it for his church. We give several ways. You give him a little bit of time, he's going to give you eternity, Brother David. You give him a little bit of your availability, he's going to whip an anointing on you like you've never felt before. You give him a little bit of your treasure. Give him back a little bit of what was already his. He's going to lay it up in heaven for you. You give him back what you can, he's going to multiply it. He's going to bless you. And he's going to bless each and every one of us with it. So I want to ask you this morning, church, how are we going to give? Are we going to give willing? Are we going to give grudgingly? Are we going to give so that God can work? Are we going to do our part to further the kingdom? So I want to ask you this morning, how are we going to give? Now, there are many ways you can give, but I hope you would give from the heart this morning. You can give through PayPal on our website. You can give through Givelify. You can send check in the mail, P.O. Box 477 to the Riverbend Pentecostals in New Madrid, Missouri. But how are you going to give this morning? With open hands, with open hearts, open minds. To let God use what you have and multiply it into the kingdom. So if you would, let's pray together this morning. Let's pray this prayer of faith. Let's come together. Upon the authority of your word, I have given. And it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offering. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. 
My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. The gold pans are for tithing, and the wooden pans are for offering, and I pray right now you would come and give as the Lord's laid it on your heart. You are the undefeated one, my light and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me, the heat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Home to protect all my needs and victory, my victory, my refuge, the one I run. Break through and I lift and glorify your name. Break 
Praise the Lord. Can we just give him a little bit of praise? What better way? What better way on a Pentecost Sunday than to be Pentecost? What better way to show God what he means to me than on the day of Pentecost to give him a little bit of praise, Brother David, to offer back just a little bit of what he's reciprocated down to me. I want to give him back just a little bit of what I can give him. Brother Richard, just as you spoke, they may think we're crazy. But they did in the Bible days too. But I gotta say, they're not drunk as ye suppose. We ain't drunk as ye suppose, but we're drunk with the Spirit of God. And the Holy Ghost is alive and well in this place. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that the Holy Ghost is here and that I can feel Him and that I have Him and that if I need Him, He's there. Amen. I like what I feel today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share just something real quick with you before we pray that I felt like the Lord wanted me to say. I was asked in prayer, I was thinking, you know, Lord, what, what do you want me to say before we pray? And I was going through the, the different things that I've wrote down and I felt led to go back way back. Brother Larry, to the message that spoke to a lot of us said because of the times a few years ago, I forgot what year it was. But Brother Wayne Huntley preached a message that I felt I wanted to share with you real quick about what it was. He preached from the text of Elijah right after he had healed the, uh, the miracle of the cake and the oil. Speaking of oil, Brother Larry, right after that, her son got sick, and he was very bad. That called Elijah in to pray for him. What he did, never even realized with me until Brother Huntley preached it, Brother David. But he stretched himself over top of that boy. I just wanted to share with somebody, God ain't getting any bigger, any better. He's still God, just like he was then. But there's a whole lot of God that I ain't touching. There's a whole lot more that I ain't reaching out and getting. And I want to just speak to somebody that we need to stretch. There ain't nothing different about it, but there's more that I can reach if I just stretch myself. There's a whole lot out there. Your problem may seem big. That boy's problem seemed like he was gone. There wasn't any way. He was dead. There was no hope. He was gone. But when he stretched, when he stretched himself over that boy, the boy disappeared. Some of us need to just stretch our hands over our problems. We got problems, situations. The devil's come against us. Just stretch yourself over them. In this prayer where we pray, stretch your hand up in the air. Say, God, say, God, I don't know what else to do, but I'm going to reach high as I can reach. Brother Larry sang a song a long time ago that said his hand reached farther down than I could reach up. But I said it then and I'll say it now. You still got to reach up. He'll reach the rest of the way, but I still got to reach far as I can. I still got to do what I got to do. I still got to reach farther than I ever have. And I want to do that in prayer right now. Lord, I pray right now, God, every need that's been made known, every need that we have in the house today, which is many. God, there's many needs, many sicknesses, many things that the devil are coming on us. God, but I pray that we will stretch ourselves over them. God, that you'll reach the rest of the way. That if we can do what we've reached to do, if we can pray, if we can intercede, if we can take these needs before you, you will take them away. You'll heal these people in the name of Jesus. You've already done it. There's testimonies from this past week. There's testimonies where you've healed people. You let procedures go the way they were supposed to go. You had your hand on the doctor. You had your hand on the physician. God, and I'm believing right now, in the name of Jesus, not only are you going to touch these needs, not only are you going to touch everybody that's sick, but God, that these people that are fighting demons, these people that are fighting depression, these people that are fighting anxiety and stress in their life, that they will leave it at an altar right now God and then on the day of Pentecost will be a day that they began their new life that there be a new pouring out upon them God I pray that the oil come in this place in a mighty way saturate every person in this place with your spirit God I pray right now in Jesus name God let us worship you freely
body. Let us worship you the way we were supposed to. You said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I believe you're here today, God, because I've not felt you this strong in a long time. And I'm believing that in this day, that this day of Pentecost, it's not only going to be the day of Pentecost, but it's going to be the day of a new life. And I'm going to give you praise for it right now. Can we give the Lord praise? Clap your hands and let's stretch for what the Lord's got. Let's stretch for the supernatural. Say 
enjoy being in the presence of the Lord for just a moment, just a moment right now. Acknowledge his presence. Thank you so much for coming to the house of the Lord today. Thank you for your worship. Amen. Thank you for, for our praise team. They do an incredible job ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Every song flows right together. Thank you for coming today. My goodness, what a good looking congregation. Amen. Can we let all our guests know that we're welcome, that they're welcome in the house? To... So, so honored that each and every one came to the house of the Lord. If you would stand with us in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord, We'll just read one passage of scripture. It's Pentecost Sunday. Um, that's simply the day of Pentecost. It is the 50th day of the Passover celebration in the Jewish culture. Pente meaning 50. It was the day that the Holy Ghost fell for the first time on whosoever will. It was the day when the New Testament church was born. It was the day uh, it was the day, Miss Jane, that the walls came down. Oh, I tell you what, we ought to be excited about that. You know what? There's a sense of entitlement that we need to be delivered from. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we wouldn't be experiencing what we are this morning. It ain't because we're good. It ain't because we're right. It's because he is. And it's because his mercy endureth forever. And his truth to all generations. And I'm so happy that you're here today. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. So today we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And I will tell you, unequivocally, beyond the shadow of a doubt, both shoulders held back and not in any way apologetically, the Holy Ghost is for every human being that's alive today. Oh, no, 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 you, didn't, you don't believe that. All seven billion people, there was enough blood shed on Calvary to eradicate and wash away the sins of every human who's ever lived. And there's enough of the Holy Ghost to fill every human that ever lived to overflowing. What you're experiencing here is not hype. What you're experiencing here is not cooked up. It's not made up and it's not built up. It is the presence of the Almighty God who has come down to be with his people. Amen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now that word Lord it, it's not going to fit our vernacular very good, but it simply means not everybody that calls him their master is going to go to heaven. Not everyone that says, 
Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says he is my Lord, he is my leader, he is the king of my life. Not everyone shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth. What's the ETH principle? You remember? Keep on, continually. He that continually does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now this is very plain, not gonna, not gonna restrict what the Lord wants to do, but I want you to know right now, salvation is not just gonna fall out of heaven on your head. You're gonna have to meet him. And you're gonna have to do what he wants you to do. And that's what happens in repentance, is my will is crucified which means dead. I don't want to hold on to it. I don't want to be the boss no more, Brother Larry. I don't want to be the boss. I was the God of my life a long time, and it never worked out. But now that he's the God of my life, he's the Lord of my life, I manifest that and exhibit that by doing what he says. Sister Maria, we would like for it to be that blab it and grab it kind of a mentality. We would like for it to be that I just got to think on the Lord or maybe even speak it, Brother Terrence, as one lady said, and don't even have to really believe it. Just say it and you're saved. That's hogwash. You don't get anywhere by saying anything. Woo! And the air just went out of the, but I thought I could just confess with my mouth. That's not what the Bible says right here. You can say what you want to say, but then you you got to put your money where your mouth is and start doing what he says do because you can't prove you believe in him if you won't obey him. Oh, I know I'm supposed, we got a house full of people. I should have just, I should have just changed it to a hoorah message, but I want somebody to go to heaven. I don't want them just to feel good on Sunday, but I want them to be delivered, and I want them to be healed, and I want them to be set free, and I want them to have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Hey! Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this house. Barnabas is going to have to open his mouth up this morning. The blind man, the blind man, he heard Jesus was coming by. And he had to say in his heart, Brother Larry, ain't missing this chance. Not missing. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And all the church said, shh, don't bother him. But the Bible says he got a little louder. I want that spirit to invade this house right now. He cried the more louder, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible said Jesus stopped and stood still. And he said, come here, boy. And you know what that beggar did? That blind beggar did? He threw off that beggar's robe because you know what? He made up his mind, ain't needing it no more because Jesus is here. And I believe that he'll do what he said he'll do and I'm just gonna, he told me to come here so I'm coming. Huh? It's that simple. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless us this morning. Anoint us powerfully and mightily. Let our words make sense. Let everything flow together. We're going to be led by the Spirit, not the flesh. I pray that faith will rise up in this house when we realize that this word is for us. It's not for our neighbor. It's not for our friend, but it's for me. I pray that there is an individuality of revelation that is loosed into this house. That everybody under the sound of my voice and in the presence of the Lord acknowledges and receives uh, that the word is for them, that the spirit is for them, that Jesus, uh, that you are for them. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands unto the Lord, all ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you for standing. Again, thank you for coming today. We are here today. We are in this room today because at some level, we have faith. At some level. And at the very least, if we don't recognize it as faith, we have hope. 
That's, uh, I felt it brewing in the house. I felt it bubbling in the house when they begin to sing those songs uh, and uh, begin to, they, they carry such a powerful and a beautiful message. Uh, but the world has embedded and ingrained in so many people that hope is for everybody but me. Uh, I want you to know this morning that Jesus Christ is the hope for the whole world, even you. We're here today because at some level we have faith. It's faith in a God that we have not seen. Faith that he'll find us, that he'll lead us, and he'll help us to become who and what he would have us to be. I hope that gets embedded in our culture. We are not just an ambulance church. We don't want to just make you better from where you were, but we want to lead you to where God wants you to be. It's not a get out of jail free card. This is not just a feel better card. This is not a band aid and a neosporin card. This is healing and change and deliverance. You can leave here today different than you've ever been in your life. We have faith in the promised return of a Savior who died and was buried and rose from that grave nearly 2,000 years ago and left us a witness of his spirit, a witness of his spirit as a gift, a comforter, the earnest of an inheritance that will never fade, reserved in heaven for us. Ladies and gentlemen, when we go to heaven, it will be rejoicing. It will be holiness. It will be happiness. It will be no tears, no crying, no sadness, no death. Everything he promised us in heaven will come to pass. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We gotta keep moving. But I want you to know, heaven's real. Heaven's real. Hell is real. There is an eternity for everybody. You're either gonna be with the Lord where you live and reign with him or you're gonna be with the enemy. It's time to make up our mind where we're gonna go. You say, I don't know about it. You know what? Ain't none of us ever been to heaven either and ain't none of us ever been to hell either. I don't care how bad your life has been, you haven't been to hell. And the reason for that is, uh, is there's still hope in your life uh, for God to make you what he wants you to be. Oh, I feel something in my spirit. Probably not preaching all this message today because the Lord's got a work he wants to do. But I saw people dancing and I saw people shouting and I saw people spinning around when they talked about the turnaround. I want you to know, yes, uh, I want you to know there was winos uh, and there was weirdos uh, and there were people that did all kinds of things that God's delivered them from that you saw jumping and shouting. You know why we're happy? Because we ain't there no more. You know why we're happy? Because Jesus set us free. You want to know why we're we're happy because we got the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. Don't you look at these suits and ties and pretty dresses and elaborate hairstyles and think that all they got it all together. You should have been there when they prayed through. You should have been there when the Lord turned them around. You should have been there when the Lord cleaned them up. Oh, I want to preach right now. I want to preach right now, but I want you to know this room is full of witnesses. This room is full of witnesses. Oh, come on. Oh. Whatever level your faith is today, it may be just, just, just that really little mustard seed of faith. Now, we've messed that scripture up too. We've messed that scripture up. That ain't all he has for you. That ain't all he wants for you. Hear me right now. That mustard seed, it ain't about the size of the mustard seed. It's what the mustard seed can become. Whatever level our faith is found at today, please know this. Your faith will lead you to exactly where God wants you to be. Whatever happens. Let me tell you something. Journey made a lot of money off of it, but they didn't found it. Jesus Christ founded this. It's his idea. Whatever happens in your life, don't stop believing that God's going to come through for you. 
don't stop believing. I said, don't stop believing. And that may be all we got to hold on to is the belief that God is going to come through. We can't see it. We can't even feel it. We don't know it. But I know he's going to. You know why? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've never went through a trial by myself. I may have felt alone, but the word says he's there. Romans 4 and 11 tells us that Abraham is the father of all who believe. He was chosen as God by God as the father of the people through whom Jesus Christ would come to earth. And Jesus came to not only validate the children of Israel as the chosen people of God, but also to validate everyone who believes in him. Genesis 12 and 1 through 4, Now the Lord said unto Abram, that's Abraham before he got his name changed, he said, get out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I will show you. Yeah. I felt this so powerful in preparation. Somebody's got to stop holding on to what's familiar and what's comfortable and let the Lord lead you to your own personal promised land. Oh, we don't like that. We don't like that. We want to stay with what's comfortable. Let me tell you something, honey. It ain't worked hanging out with them up till now. It ain't going to work hanging out with them tomorrow. If you're going to be different, uh, you got to take off. Uh, and when you go in the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, there are some people that cannot go with you. That's why, oh, I feel Jesus. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost so heavy on me right now. He said, get out of your country and from your kindred, from your father's house unto a land that I will show you. He didn't even know where he was going. He just went by faith in the word of God. He said, I'm going to make of you a great nation. And I'll bless you. And I'll make your name great and you'll be a blessing. And I will bless them. This is a whole message by itself. But don't you buy into that business that Israel's wrong over there. He said, I'll bless them that bless you, and I'll curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And the beginning of verse number four says, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coming a time between the for the separation of the sheep and the goats. And the only separator is who will do what he says. Why do you think it is? Why do you think it is that the greatest enemy that we have to fight as parents, as teachers, as preachers, and even doctrine is a bunch of people that feel like they know better than the one who does know? How powerful and rich and beautiful will our world be if everybody will find their place and get in it and live in it and listen to the one who knows what to do? And with Abraham's obedience, I know I'm all over the place, but I'm going to get there, baby, just in a few minutes. Hold on to your hat. And with that obedience, the seed was planted and the stage was set. With Abraham's obedience, the stage was set for the implementation of God's plan for mankind. Do you not find it ironic that God's plan wasn't going to work without man's obedience? Hey, even when he eradicated all of mankind, Brother David, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah's relationship with God through grace was built on obedience. Noah and his family are not saved unless they obey the building of the ark. Let me tell you something, honey. You talk about grace all you want to. In Noah's day, let me tell you what grace was. It was a door in the side of the boat. Because till Noah went in the door, he wasn't saved. It wasn't enough to know it. Boy, I know I'm meddling right now, but I'm preaching in the Holy Ghost. It's not enough to know what to do. You got to do it. God's plan was for Abraham to be the father of many nations and the father of the faithful and the father of the family to which Jesus Christ would be born. And Abraham didn't even have one son. He didn't even have a daughter. He had no children, but he had a promise. There ain't no way this can happen. Oh, yes, it can. You know why God said it was going to happen. Sarah passed up the time. I learned how to say this in a nice way because one time I, I preached that Sarah got all dried up. And I think I heard a few feelings. 
Probably some ladies had something in common with her. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but she was way past the ability and the time to have kids. When the Lord said, it's time. Oh, I could preach, man. If you, if you fellas stand there for like five more minutes, I'm just going to give an altar call. We got to get faith in God. Got to rise up in us. I don't care what you are in your life. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel it. I don't care where you are in life. I don't care what the judge has said. I don't care what your mama said. I don't care what your daddy said. I don't care what anybody else has said. If you got a word from God, to listen to him and stop listening to all this noise that's around us. Come on, that's what the church... That's what we came to do under the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost is shut down the voice of the world in your ears and open you up to the voice of God that says you are my workmanship. I have created you in my image and likeness. I made you for more than this. I made you for more than that. I made you to heal. I made you to deliver. I made you to set free. I made you to be my hands and my feet and my mouth and my eyes. If you could see what God has in store for you, you'd know why the devil's been working so hard to keep you down. All right, be seated. Let me preach. Finally, when Abraham was 100, everybody say 100, and Sarah was 90, yes, they had a baby. And they named him Isaac. He was a son of promise. And then, oh my goodness, God came through with the greatest miracle that Abram ever saw. Him and Sarah, we passed the time of even wanting kids. They done gave up. And the Lord sent them a baby boy named Isaac. And they loved him. And he was the fulfillment of the promises of God. And every morning when he would, when he would cry, and I'm just going to use a little evangelistic liberty, when he would cry to be fed in the nighttime, Sarah didn't get mad. She heard him cry and said, thank you, Lord. When he was walking around being naughty, you know, they didn't say, oh, why'd you give me this? They said, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We gave up. I could preach right now. We gave up. We thought we was past it. We thought the promise wasn't going to come true with us. We even tried to do an end around on the Lord and caused a whole bunch more trouble. But he still came through with his promise. So he'd pat him on his little fat bottom and he'd say, thank you, Lord. Until one day, Genesis 22 and 1, it came to pass after these things. That God did tempt. That word tempt doesn't mean he tried to get something shady on him. It's a test. He tested Abraham and he said unto him, Abraham. He said, here I am. He said, take thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Yes, that one. And get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I'll tell you of. And Abraham. He said, everybody says, Lord ain't going. But he that does the will of my father. And Abraham rose up early. Everybody say early. early. And if he ever had an opportunity to procrastinate, this was it. Yeah. But he rose up early in the morning. He saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and they split the wood for a burnt offering, and they rose up and went to the place. Everybody say the place. place. Which God had told him. With exactly zero reasons why this was a good idea. Abraham willfully, quickly, and straightway obeyed and did exactly what God told him to do and went exactly where God told him to go. Say, I don't understand what God's doing. You think Abraham did? He told me this promise that I'm going to have this boy and this boy is going to bring me a seed that in, the, in all the world is going to be blessed and I'm going to have a name that's known everywhere and I'm going to have kids like the stars and kids like the sun and now the Lord said, I want you to kill him. But Abraham did exactly what he said. And there on Mount Moriah, 
Abraham bound his son Isaac and he drew back his knife to take his life and give him to the Lord as a sacrificial offering. And when he drew back the knife, the Bible said the angel of the Lord called him and said, Abraham, stop. Lay not thy hand on the lad. Don't do anything to him. Look at here. Brother Tripp, he said, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord. Abraham could have been bebopping around the dirty courtyard all the time talking about great is the Lord, great is the Lord. But until he did what the Lord told him to, even the Lord didn't know where Abraham stood. Because he says, now I know. Now I know because you did what I told you to. Even though it didn't make any sense even though it wasn't right, even though it hurt your feelings, even though that you had no reason why it was right. Now I know because you didn't hold your son from me. This example of complete submission and obedience to the word of God, while not always followed, it would be the key to the fulfillment of God's plan for saving mankind. It was faithful obedience that put Joseph and Mary in a stable in Bethlehem and Joseph standing guard and protecting over a wife that's carrying a child that wasn't his. And there a baby boy was born, born of a woman but fathered by the Holy Spirit. You're going to have a hard time binding that together with the Trinitarian belief system because he told Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary because that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. I thought it was the Father. Well, it was. It's the Holy Ghost. He would live, this baby boy, forgive me for that, but it's just the truth. It's the Word. There's only one God. He would live for only 33 and one half years, 30 of which were spent in obscurity, working as a carpenter alongside his earthly father, Joseph. 30 years. Aren't you 30, Brother Richard, or are you 31? Stand up. It's what Jesus looked like when nobody knew his name. Nobody knew anything about him except even in Nazareth. You can be seated. Even in Nazareth, Brother David, they said he's the son of Joseph the carpenter. But for three and a half years, Launched into ministry by John the Baptist, himself ordained by God. Very early, hear me right now, very early, Jesus chose 12 men. 12 men from different backgrounds, different walks of life, different stations in life. 12 men who even after being filled with the Holy Ghost were considered unlearned and ignorant by the elite of the day. Not 12 men that might be a prize. He, he didn't go get the top 12 in the graduating class of 29 AD, but he went and got specific. God called men from all different walks of life. 12 men with whom he would spend most of his time. Jesus never had a church this big. Most of his preaching was done with 12 men. Then to a greater degree, three men in the inner circle. But he was preparing them. He was preparing them for a mission that was beyond any of their capabilities. And sometimes they struggled. You want to get to feeling good about yourself? Go read about Jesus' disciples. You ain't never seen a like of 12 knuckleheads lumped together like he had. Oh, you talk about knuckleheads. Has anybody ever been reading the Gospels and got mad at the disciples? for being such dummies. They were right there with Jesus. They're walking with Jesus. They're seeing the miracles of Jesus and they're arguing about which one of them's the greatest. You know, James and John's mama comes knocking on Jesus' door saying, would you let my baby sit on your right and left hand in the regeneration? And you know what that did to the rest of the disciples? Made them want to kill them. Peter lied. I'm not giving you a release, Sister Fran, but the Lord does deliver you from that stuff. That's elements class this morning. If you want to know what we're talking about, come to it. 
But Peter, the very one who's about to preach Pentecost, he told the Lord, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll die with you. I'll go with you even to the death. And the Lord said, you wish. He said, matter of fact, before the rooster crows in the morning, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter like, no, 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 you got the wrong guy. But sure enough, he lied, denied, lied, denied, lied, and just to prove he really wasn't one of them, had a cussing fit and lied. And then the rooster crowed. That's his disciples. That's the ones he chose. A tax collector who was a traitor. Fishermen who were known because of the hot-headed, angry family they lived in. James and John, the sons of thunder. You got an anger problem? You got something in common with Jesus' disciples. Brother Cody, I don't know if I've ever done any better preaching, man. I want you to hear me now. They struggled. These disciples, they struggled. And sometimes they won. I want to tell somebody this in the Holy Ghost. If, if you don't hear, hear me right now, if you don't hear nothing else I said this whole time, I want you to hear me. Everywhere God calls you to go, he doesn't call you to go there and be a success. Stop gauging whether you're in the will of God or not based upon what's happening around you. Sometimes God puts you into a situation where the best you can hope for is to change one life. But you've got to trust that God's got his hand on you even if the world is not just blowing up all around you. You've got to know the hand of the Lord is on your life. You've got to know it. Sometimes the Lord's not going to call you to a church that's going to blow up with revival. Sometimes the Lord's going to call you to dif disciple four or five precious souls. Hear me now. we got to stop gauging success by the world's measurement. Because let me tell you something. Them 12 he called, they weren't successes. Just when it seemed that their world acknowledged Jesus for who he was, one week before the Passover, Jesus comes riding a donkey down Main Street. The triumphant entry, the Via Dolorosa. It don't look like much if you really want to know the truth. But he come riding a donkey down. They put coats for him to sit on. They strew their coats and they, they're waving palm branches. This is Jesus. And the disciples are bebopping along with him saying it's about time. We've been with him all this time. We've been knowing who he was. It's about time. But very quickly, Brother David, very quickly, it feels like they've arrived. Even the people, they cry out to Jesus and they say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And the disciples are like, yes, all this wandering around and sleeping under the stars and, you know, having to love people we don't really love and all that, we're about to get them now. He's going to be who we wanted him to be, but no, in a week. In a week, the very same ones are screaming at the top of their lungs, crucify him. Let his blood be upon our head and the head of our children. Just like out of nowhere comes an all-out assault on their bodies, their minds, and their spirits. And within one week, Jesus went from a conquering king to no longer even resembling a human being. He was beaten down in every way, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And if it wasn't enough, he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And the disciples were alone. They devoted the last three and a half years of their life to following this man who made them all kinds of promises. But now, Brother David, he's dead. And the enemy has won. At least in their mind. They were alone. Now, while the disciples were hidden for fear, it was benevolent strangers who took the body of Jesus from the cross and carried him to a nearby tomb and buried his pitiful remains. Finally, after three days, some of the ladies, I felt something rise up in me this morning when I wrote this. Ladies, revival's not going to happen without you. 
not going to happen without you. While the disciples were hid out, some of the ladies who followed Jesus, they came to the tomb and they brought some spices that they had gathered together to anoint the dead body of Jesus. But when they arrived at the tomb, the stone was rolled away and he was not there. They were amazed to find it empty and they feared the worst. Somebody stole him until two men stood there beside them and said, why see, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Sometimes I pray this. Uh, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. I love it, I love it, I love it. And then they said, don't you remember? He told you it was only going to be three days. He told you he was coming alive after three days. Don't you remember? The ladies went to the disciples and told them the good news. He's risen from the dead. And the disciples said, y'all crazy. You're telling tales, idle tales. We don't believe you. But finally, Peter, failure Peter, lying Peter, denying Peter, cussing Peter, who his last experience with God is going to be the fulfillment of his greatest failure in his mind. He gets up. I wish there was somebody in the house who you've been known by your failure. You've become to embrace your failure. It's who you are. It's your identity as a loser. In your mind, that's how Peter was. But you know what happened? He stood up. He said, you know what? I don't believe these gals, but I want to see it for myself. And he made his way to the tomb where Jesus was. And when he arrived, yes, just like they said, it was empty. Rather than being encouraged, Brother Ronnie, rather than being encouraged, they got more afraid. They went and hid in a room somewhere and locked the door. Jesus couldn't get in if he wanted to. But surprise, surprise, surprise. They're sitting there with tear in their beer. All they can talk about is what kind of a failure they are and how abandoned they are and how lost they are. What if I told you that the Holy Ghost invaded this room today to deliver everybody from a victim mentality? Well, Terrence, we got to stop trying to figure out whose fault it is and start preparing ourselves for when he sets us free. No matter who got you here, honey, it's who gets you out is what we're looking for. And Jesus just walked through the wall into the room where they were. You say, I don't know if I believe that or not. Let me tell you something. You're going to see a lot more things coming down the road you don't know if you believe or not. There's some people in this house right now that everybody said they'd never do anything good with themselves, but here they are. Huh? They'd never have a family, but here they are. They'd never hold down a job, but here they are. Let me tell you something right now. It's more of a miracle for the Lord to change somebody's life than it is for him to walk through a cotton-picking wall. You should have been there when I prayed through. The church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven. Not everyone that says he's my master is going to heaven. Only the ones. (laughs) Now you know in it, there's people going to heaven besides Pentecostals. They are. Truth is, all them ain't going. I don't care what you call yourself. Don't start getting your hackles all up. I don't care what you call yourself. It ain't what the name of your church is that determines if you're saved or not. It's the name of you obeying the Lord. I don't care if you go to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If you don't do what the Lord says, you ain't going when the trumpet sounds. He ain't grading on the curve, and there ain't nobody getting into heaven because he feels sorry for you. If that's the case, we'd all already be saved. Sorry, I'm sorry. They tried to hide themselves because they're afraid. He ain't there. Now they've stole him. 
Brother Ronnie had never even entered into their mind. He'd been telling them for three and a half years, they're going to beat me, they're going to crucify me, they're going to kill me, but I'm coming out. You can go through there and read it for yourself. It's in there over and over and over and over and over again. They got to be some of the dumbest fellas that ever walked. That gives us all hope. I mean, really? They didn't ever get it, Brother Richard. And with the revelation of Jesus in their midst, he said, come on, touch my hands, touch my sides. It's me. It's me. I ain't dead no more. I'm alive. I told you I would be. But now the work is just getting started. And with the revelation of Jesus Christ in their midst would begin 40 of the greatest days that the disciples had ever spent with Jesus. But it couldn't last. Because even though the work of Jesus was complete, their work was just beginning. Luke 24 and 44. And he, that's Jesus, said unto them, these are the words, he's reminding them right here. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So you understand that they're talking about, you see that right here? He said, everything that the, the Bible said about me, it had to come to pass, and it did. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, now, Let's talk about, oh, y'all, come on now. I hear y'all jabbering before church starts. Y'all ain't scared to talk. Turn to your neighbor and say, now, now. let's talk about the scriptures, talk about the scriptures. Concerning, you. concerning you. You see, everything's done in him. When he said it's finished, he was done. He did everything he could. There's not another miracle left. There's not another blessing left. There's not another sacrifice left. Calvary wrapped it all up, and now he's handing it to us. Verse number 45. Then opened he, somebody ought to get excited in the Holy Ghost right now. All of your questions, their answers are coming. You're just looking in the wrong place. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. How in the world? Looky, 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 looky. Three and a half years he spent with them. They never did get it. One conversation around the supper table after the resurrection. After the resurrection, he opens their understanding to the scriptures. Y'all feel that? Y'all feel that in here? Ooh, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, thus, that means for this reason, it is written. And for this reason, it behooved, or it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations. Ready? Beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48. And you are witnesses. I'm trying to get done. And you are witnesses of these things. That's the things that have happened with Jesus, and that's the things that are going to happen because he leaves. Acts chapter 1. No, no, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. What's that got to do with anything? You remember what he told Abraham? Go to a place I told you about. You know what he told the children of Israel here in the upper room? Go to a place I told you about. And you stay there. You stay there till you get clothed, covered, smothered with power from on high. Acts 1 and 12, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from the Jerusalem of seven days journey. And they were come in. They went up into an upper room where abode both Peter. Are you ready for this? Where, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotus, and Judas, the brother James. That's the 11 disciples that are left since Judas tapped out. These all continued with one accord. You know where they are? right where God told them to go. And you know where they're staying? Right where God told them to stay. You know how long they're going to stay there? Till the promise comes from heaven. Yeah. 
These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Yes, ma'am, I got to tell you something. Mary, without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, would have been lost. She didn't get saved just because she brought Jesus into the world. She was in the upper room waiting on the Holy Ghost just like the rest of them. Come on, somebody. Stand with me. You ready, Brother Terrence? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, everybody say all. all. You know why they were there? He told them to go there. He told them if you go there, there's a promise coming. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them. And they were all, and they were all, you know who all was? Everybody that went and did what he said. Everybody that obeyed his word. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See, it caused an uproar. And folks came from all over the city to see what was happening. And they heard all of these silly, ignorant Galileans, poor people and, and losers and, and folks that had no reputation. They're all dancing and spinning and twirling and speaking in tongues that they didn't know. Acting drunk, we know that. Because they were all in doubt. Some said, what's this mean? Some mocked and said, these are full of new wine, the good stuff. They tore up from the flow up. <laughs> but Peter, Brother Tripp, standing up with the 11, said, oh, they're not drunk like you think they are. But this is that which the prophet Joel prophesied. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all Flesh. You think we act this way because we want a cool club of, of dingbats? Huh? You think we act this way and we get excited and we grin and we talk in tongues and we get all hot and sweaty and shirt tail flopping? You know, I thought I looked nice when I, I thought I looked better than Terrence when I came to church today. Now I don't. That's, a, that's an inside joke. He told me I was about to get up close to him. See, they're not drunk as you suppose, but this is that, spoken by the prophet Joel. And then Peter preached unto him. And when he got finished preaching his message in Acts 2 and 37, now when they heard this, it hit them in their heart. It like a knife went in their heart. Like, oh. And they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what do we do? Sister Maria, I got to let you know something. The devil has been jacking folks' minds up for thousands of years because this has been there. And you know what Brother Terry told me? You remember what Brother Terry told me? He went to, I, I ain't going to say all of them, but that church and that church and that church and that church, the ones you're thinking of. And he got saved in all of them. And he loved the preaching and he loved the teaching. But you know what he told me? He said, every church I ever went to, they ignored this verse. When they got to Acts 2, 37, 38, they just left them out, skipped over them. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Tell me what to do. We done messed up. We done goofed up. What do we do? How do we fix it? We crucified the only king of glory. He was the Messiah. He came and we messed it up. We goofed it up. We're the biggest failures the world has ever seen. So what do we do? You know what Peter said? Then Peter said unto them, repent. What does repent mean? Repent says surrender. Lord, I give up. I've been going this way all my life. I've been doing this way all my life. I've been thinking this way all my life, but I'm going to follow you now. Don't understand it, don't know it, but that's what it means. It means I'm ready for a new way of living. I'm ready for new habits. I'm ready for new friends. I'm ready. I want new everything. And it's accompanied by a sorrowful spirit that says, oh, God, I'm so sorry. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You see, baptism is wash away your sins, not because you want everybody to see how cool you are. That ain't what baptism is. There's a doctrine going around that you get baptized for the benefit of the church. That's nuts. 
You don't get baptized for the benefit of nobody else. You get baptized because you got some sins in your life that need to be washed away. I'm hurrying. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. That's what he died for. And that's why he had to leave. And then he says, for the promises unto you and to your children, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's for everybody. He said it would begin in Jerusalem, the message of hope preached into all the world. Now let me say this qualifier real quick. I don't normally preach this long. Usually a little longer. I want you to know the Holy Ghost is for you. It's the gift of God from heaven. He's okay. It's the gift of God from heaven for everybody. Ronnie, for everybody. And if you push against him, he'll grab a hold of you and say, I'm right, boy. Listen. Listen. No, ain't that right? Amen. So who's ready? I know I preached a long time today, but I want you to know something. It's truth, Brother Terrence. And you know what it is? The Lord is speaking into somebody's ears. He's talking to you. You just thought you were hid behind your angry attitude and by your mask and by your defensive posture. But the Holy Ghost came today to get past all of that and get in your heart. Whosoever will, let them come. They're about to sing. When they start singing, the altars are open. Are you ready? You ready? One, two, ready, go. Well, I wish somebody so oh. catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire. Burn it. Burn it with the Holy Ghost. Oh. I wish somebody so
you but i feel the power of the holy ghost in this place amen the fire of the holy ghost and i'm so thankful for that praise god praise god we've got a good looking crowd here this morning what the pastor shared with us was the plan of salvation this morning that is the plan of salvation there's no no way around it brother larry acts 4 12 says neither there's salvation in any other for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And I'm so thankful that I found that to be true. Amen. How many of you glad to be here this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that what I received. Praise God. We're going to dismiss you in Jesus' name in just a minute, but I want to read the announcements. One hour of prayer tomorrow night at 630. The Riverbend Kids Popcorn Party this Wednesday night. Bring a friend. 
Bring somebody with you. We got a big popcorn machine over there now. <laughs> Church cleaning this week, team three, Sister Kim Keen. The Riverbend Praise Team, don't they do a good job? Yeah. Do an awesome job <laughs> ushering us into the presence of God. The Riverbend Praise Team will be singing at an afternoon outdoor event in Lilburn today at 3.30. It's uh, the Remnant, or 3 o'clock, I'm sorry, 3 o'clock, the Remnant House Church on Main Street. And Vacation Bible School is scheduled for July the 19th through the July the 22nd, and it's ages 4 through 11 years of age. These kids get excited about that. They make that a lot of fun. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries in the house this morning? Any birthdays or anniversaries in the house this morning? Ah, Brother Joe. Praise God. 29. 29. All right. There you go. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, brother Joe, you stay standing. We're going to sing happy birthday to you, brother. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best one you've ever had. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Will you stand with me this morning? We're going to dismiss you in prayer. So thankful for everybody that's been here. Brother Larry, dismiss us in prayer this morning, brother. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word, God, and for everything. Pray, Lord, that this word will find a place in our heart. God, we'll carry it with us and pour it into 